Hey guys, it's time for initial assessment. I'm going to try to do a little bit more of a deeper dive in this week because I've only got one book. But let's go ahead and get into that book, and that is going to be G.I. Joe, Issue 1 by Joshua Williamson, art by Tom Riley, and colors by Jordi Belair. So let's go ahead and dive into this, guys. All right, we have the next issue of an ongoing series in the Skybound Energon universe. So this is the same creative team that worked on the Duke miniseries, I believe. I didn't read that one, but I waited in anticipation for this issue so that we could get a proper introduction to... We have Risk and Clutch and Rock and Roll, and we've got um, the Baroness. Come on, I knew I was going to remember all of them. Um... You got Duke, and come on, help me out here, help me out. La -da 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 -da. And I can't turn the page, it's going to tell me who everybody is. Cover Girl, and then we've got Stalker. So, pardon me, Stalker and Cover Girl, for forgetting who you are. But, as you can see, this opens to an explosive beginning. We've got the Joes jumping out of an airplane with rocket packs on their back. We've got the Baroness on the side of the good guys. So that's interesting to see how long that's going to last. And everybody's got their different strengths. Rock and roll is the heavy artillery. Stalker can talk to anybody in any language. He's a people person. Cover Girl was a model at one point, but turned her assets to building tanks and weaponry. Then you have Clutch, and Clutch can drive anything. And then you have the Baroness, who pretty much improvises and uses her beauty and her brawn to get the job done. So, this opens with Destro and Cobra Commander finding out about Energon and converting all of the G.I. Joe weapons that they use against the team to firing Energon instead of firing regular artillery. So this changes everything. Because now we have, and here's the introduction of Risk, who we're not really sure what's going on with him just yet. But he's going to be a new uh, recruit to the codename G.I. Joe team. But anyway, as I was saying, using Energon is, is, is going to kill people. It's going to make it a laser gun. It's not going to use bullets as you and I think about, but instead it's going to use a laser. Well, is anybody who's really read more than one or two issues featuring the living laser against Iron Man, even Iron Man's armor can't stand up to a direct laser blast, a pinpoint laser blast, because lasers are energy and you can't dissipate energy, you can only redirect it. You can't create it. You can't destroy energy. You can only redirect it. So when you have that energy, as we saw just a couple of pages ago, being used against this dummy, what do you think is going to happen when they use this weaponry against the Joes? So now we've got a much more deadly situation than what we've seen before. So the Joes are walking in blindly, not knowing that Destro and Cobra Commander have have harnessed this new weaponry, which is always what it was with Joe. It was always who had the coolest toys. And that's what I like about this, is there's a story behind it. There is characterization. Joshua Williamson comes swinging out of the gate with this. There's a palpable energy and that's not to say that Larry Hama's real American hero doesn't still have that palpable energy. But the thing is, is that, to be honest, let me flip this for a minute. To be honest, guys, we haven't given Larry Hama the respect that he deserves for working on this title, for creating this mythology. It's not just one or two characters. It's an entire mythology of, I think, 311 issues so far. This guy's working his fingers to the bone 
never going to see really any major money for all the 40 plus years that he's put into this property. But yet he still does it month in and month out, even though his hands hurt. It's hard to type. He said these things. He's 75, 76 years old, guys. Uh, I got parents that are both 80. Well, my dad will be 80 next year. So 79 and 80. They can't do the things that they used to be able to do. My mom, if she wanted to go and be a secretary for somebody, I don't think that she could keep up with all the typing because her hands would be pained and arthritic. My dad couldn't do the same things he could do at my age 40 years ago. So think about these things as you read these books. And, you know, maybe find a email address or even a physical address and send something to Larry Hama, not to sign. That's not the point. That's not the point. We're not trying to get anything for free from this guy. He's already given enough. But instead, send him a thank you letter, a heartfelt thank you letter that you wrote with your own hand and say thank you for putting in all these years. You are a double veteran. You're a veteran to your country and you're a veteran to the G.I. Joe Army. Okay? All right, enough of that. So get back to just how much fun this book is. The artwork is kinetic. It's explosive. You get that same feeling that you got when you watched the cartoon back in the 1980s. You had something... You had these characters that you care about. Uh-oh. Here comes a grenade. But... And I'm not going to show, I'm not going to show what happens at the very end to one of the beloved characters from G.I. Joe. But even Baroness, she's like, lasers? They're using lasers now? So, all right, so this video series is entitled Initial Assessment. <clears throat> I was going to give you a little backstory on that. I've worked psych for almost 20 years, on and off. My nickname is Doc. I've tried to turn this channel and use some of those uh, turn of phrases to my advantage. Not to twist anybody. Not to be uh, disruptive or anything like that. But because if you have a nickname or if you have worked in a field for a long time, then you come to understand that field. Whether you're a ditch digger, whether you work in the higher, you know, Fortune 500 companies as an executive, whatever it is, you bring that to the table. So initial assessment, I've been going through it, I think, a little bit quickly, more quickly than I should. So I'm going to say that on initial assessment, I give the artwork an 8.5. I give the writing a nine. And I'm going to say, as I do at the end of these videos, that if you're looking for action and adventure and characterization, if you're looking for those things, if that is what is deficient in your treatment, your treatment of life, because that's what we read these comic books for, their entertainment. I heard a video by Perch the other day, and it made sense. How hard is it to, to do a, you know, how hard is it to, to run a comic book store? And we're not dumb, but sometimes we just don't think about these things. Comic books are not essential, but it might be next to a pharmacy, which is an essential thing. It might be next to a supermarket or a grocery store, and those are essential things. Comic books are not essential. If all comic books disappeared tomorrow, I would be sorely, sorely disappointed to never read another issue of Amazing Spider-Man. But if they all disappeared tomorrow, it wouldn't be the end of my life. On the other hand, if you lose your medication, if you lose your food, that might be the end of your life. But... We need this entertainment. This entertainment is just as valuable mentally to us as those physical things are to us. It gives us an escape 
from everyday reality. It gives us an escape from the pressures of life, the stress of the job, no matter what job you do. It gives us an outing, and a particular G.I. Joe, Transformers, Thundercats, those sort of things, they take us back to our childhood to a more innocent time. So these initial assessment videos, to me, are just as important about bringing in old readers as it is about bringing in new readers. Because a new reader, somebody who's 14, 15 years old, does not have the same affinity for some for G.I. Joe as this property as somebody my age or somebody my brother's age. My brother loved G.I. Joe. He's got an entire run of the uh, all 155 issues of the first series from Marvel. Now, I've tried to get him a few times into the newer series, and he just doesn't... He didn't care anymore. It's not the same. But always remember, guys, as you're going through and you're reading your comics, remember why you're reading them. Remember why they're important to you. G.I. Joe is an essential diet for somebody my age because we remember the characters. We remember the stories. We remember the heroism. It's the same reason that Optimus Prime is the hero of almost every young boy and every young girl at heart from the late 70s through the late 80s. We all loved Prime. It didn't help, I mean, it didn't hurt that he was red, white, and blue. But it also didn't hurt that he had heroic properties and he fought for the little guy and he stood up for those that were oppressed. And that's lessons that we can all take away and learn from. So... In conclusion, to flip it back, I would say that if you're missing these things in your life, that this is what needs to be prescribed. And I would go to my comic shop, pick up a copy, maybe even pick up a copy, stone cold, of the newest issue of A Real American Hero. Give Larry Hama some props and some money and some, you know, faith. Sure, you're 310 issues behind, but it's a fun series, and it's entertaining month in and month out. And Larry will be writing that title, that title, and I guess until he can't do it anymore. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. Sorry to get a little heavy-handed here at the end, but I just didn't want you to think that these uh, initial assessment videos were throwaway videos or things that didn't matter to me. They are very important to me. Bringing new readers into the comic community and reigniting old fires of people that might have given up is equally important to me. And just growing this hobby that we all love, it can't go wrong. You can't go wrong as long as you feed people nourishment and you give them good books to read and good medicine to help their ailments and what they're missing out of life. So thanks guys for joining me again. Hope you have a great night. If you haven't, please like and subscribe to the channel. We are inching towards that 150 count. I'm excited about that. And exactly two weeks, I mean two months from now, I'll have been doing this YouTube channel for a whole year. That blows my mind that I've been doing this for, for almost 52 weeks. So, hopefully you guys will join me in the uh, video for what will be January the 13th, I believe, of 2025. And we'll talk some more comics. In the meantime, don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. Give me a like down at the bottom. Throw me some comments. Did you guys pick this book up? What did you think? Let's start a conversation. All right, folks. Have a great night. We'll catch you in the next video.